Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to Advanced Tired Chemistry and Coffee. Appropriately enough for today, a little bit of caffeine with the kinetics topic. I'd like to look at speeds of reaction, how we measure the speeds of reaction, and a lot more detail than we ever did before. Previously, in previous lives, we always thought that kinetics, the rate of reaction, was just equal to um, the change in concentration or volume over the change in time. And that's still true. That is still true. However, shockingly, there are subtleties we didn't mention to you before. Let's start with the first one here. Reactions tend to occur in multiple steps. Now, if you have, say, three steps, for example, in a, in a given chemical reaction, then those three steps can have different speeds. There will be logically a fastest step, there will be an intermediate step, speed-wise that is, and there will be a slowest step. It also means that the overall rate will be held up by the slowest step. It must be held up by the slowest step. Logically, the clue's in the name. It is the slowest one. The other two steps are standing there, tapping their fingers, waiting for this step to happen. It's not necessarily the first stage or the second stage. There is no way to tell, actually, where the slowest step occurs, but we can work out what is involved, which chemicals, that is, are involved in the slowest step. This will come back to, don't worry, this will be made clearer in section two. So let's just go with this first of all. Reactions occur in multiple steps, one of which is the slowest. We even give the slowest a name. Um, we give it the rate determining step. Once again, the clue is in that name. It is the step that determines the overall rate of the reaction. I will probably not call it the rate determining step anymore. I will shorten it to RDS. Let's have a look at order of a reaction with respect to a single reactant chemical. And once we've done the individual orders, we can work out the overall order for the whole reaction. This is probably easiest to define with an example, in fact, and I've got a couple of examples. Um, let me fish them out. Actually, before we fish them out, let's define what the order of a reaction means in terms of the SQA's definition. I'm very glad to say they have updated it just recently to a mathematical definition. Before we get to that, let's take ourselves an abstract chemical reaction where we have A plus B plus C makes D. <clears throat> now, changing the concentrations of these chemicals changes the overall rate of this equation. But it's quite complex because there are three different reactants here. So what we would probably do is change the concentrations of each one, but only one at a time, and then see what effect that has, changing the concentration of C, for example, has on the overall rate of the reaction. Now, in previous simpler times, rate was just simply directly proportional to the concentration of a chemical, i.e. if you doubled the concentration of A, you would double the rate. Now, that can be tr still true. Um, that can be still true. And this is where we start to introduce a concept called the order of a reaction. So, let's do it the other way around, actually. Let's rewrite that. So we have the concentration of chemical A. And then we have the rate. In fact, do you know what we'll do? Let's put some numbers down. Let's put some numbers down. Um, so, for example, let's say we had a concentration of uh, 2 moles per litre. And then we have a rate of, oh, I don't know, pick a random number, 10. Uh, and that is moles per litre per second. We'll come back to these units later on. That was my third uh, learning outcome, but don't worry too much about the units just now. I'm just going to keep it bare numbers for simplicity. Now, so this is a uh, reaction one. We had a concentration of two and we found we got a rate of 10. For reaction two, well, let's say we double this to a concentration of four. So this has been multiplied by two. Now, previously to this, we would you would obviously say, well, we're going to get a, a rate of 20, obviously 
because we have multiplied that also by 2. But this is where the order of the reaction comes in. The order is actually the power here. So we've multiplied this by 2, and this has also been multiplied by 2. So that is actually 2 to the power of 1. And we call this a first order reaction. Now again, at this point, you, you might be thinking to yourself, you can't get anything else. Well, you actually can. Let's have a look at that different chemical involved in this reaction. Let's take, for example, chemical B. And I'm going to create another little table, and a little results table here, a rate. Are we still in shot? Yes, we are. Excellent. And let's just, for easy counting, let's keep the numbers the same. So we start with a concentration of B of 2, and we get a rate of, say, um, 50. And if we change the concentration of B to 4, just like we did before, so once again, multiplying by 2, this time we observe that we get a rate of 200. <laughs> Considerably more than we were expecting. Now, if you do the sums on this, this is four times it, which effectively means you've multiplied by two raised to the power of two. This is a second order reaction. So this is a new thing for us. It turns out that if you double this, you don't always just simply double the rate. You multiply the rate by 2 raised to a certain power, and that power is the order of the reaction. Are there any other options other than 1 and 2? Let's get a fresh sheet and see. Okay, here we are revisiting the reaction again. This time we're looking at chemical C which we haven't addressed so far. We have changed the concentration of C from 2 to 4, so again, we have doubled that. And if we do this particular measurement, we find that the rate stays exactly where it was. It appears to have not changed, because it hasn't changed. So what on earth is the multiplier here? It's almost a trick of maths, really, because if you can jump ahead, you can work out what power goes in here. It's actually 2 to the power of 0, because anything to the power of 0 equals 1. So we've multiplied the rate by 1. This is called a zero-order reaction. Now, this might seem a massive affront to your common sense. How can changing the concentration of C not change the rate? Because it's one of the reactants. This harks back to what I said about the rate-determining step. Now, what conclusion can we make about C and A and B, in fact, as well. Well, we can step, sorry, rate determining step. Remember, this is the step in this reaction. It's a multiple step reaction. And the slowest step is what controls the rate or what affects the rate. It's a bit like trying to evacuate a building. If you imagine yourself in a school, the fire bell rings and everybody has to get out as quickly as possible then there will always be multiple points at which the entire population of that building has to pass through. Including, for example, the door to the classroom, or along the corridors, or the actual fire exit doors themselves from the building. Now, if you have corridors that are 10 metres wide, um, and you have, say, 50 fire exits on the building, then... Both of these are irrelevant. They are not controlling the maximum speed you can evacuate the building at. It will actually be the size of the classroom door because that's where 20 or 30 people pile into to try and leave the building, if you see what I mean by that analogy. So what can we deduce from this? We can deduce that C is in fact not involved in the slowest step. So chemical C does not take part in the slowest step. And that's why changing the concentration of C has no effect on the rate. So we can say that only A and B are involved in this rate determining step. Now, just a quick look back at this. We said 
that the reaction was first order with respect to A, second order with respect to B. This means that changing the concentration, concentration of B has a much larger effect on the rate. In fact, second order means there are probably two Bs involved. And that's why it's second order with respect to B. And there is probably only one A involved, one molecule of A, two molecules of B. That's why B is more important at affecting the rate. And of course, as we said, zero molecules of poor old C. C is involved in the reaction, but it's not involved in the slowest step. Weird as that is. So, one and two here today, folks. I wanted to introduce this multiple steps concept. I wanted to point out that these multiple steps are different speeds and one of them will be slowest and the slowest step affects your overall rate. We looked at the mathematical definition of the order. The order was the power here that we raised. So the multiplier, the power of the multiplier, that is the order. And it can exist as zero and one and two. Can it exist as three? Yes, certainly can. Have I seen the SQA ask that? Hardly ever. Um, what would that look like? Just in the bottom corner here, what would that look like? Well, I'm hoping you can maybe work it out using the same format as before. If we have C and rate, and let's put concentration of C as two, and then we double it up to four, um, and then we pick a number, say, um, something that I can do easily in my head, Let's say three, the rate was three. Then that's multiplying by two. And if we're saying, if we're saying third order here, then that means we're multiplying by two to the power of three, which is eight, which means we would end up with a rate of 24. And that would not be true. There would be three. C molecules in the rate determining step in this case. It's rare. It is very rare. I haven't seen them do that very often. I have seen them do slightly sneakier things than that though. I have seen them do, for example, concentration of, uh, let's go back to A, which was a nice simple first order. Uh, concentration of A and rate. So let's pick some numbers. Let's say we went from um, this time, let's say we went from 1 up to 3. Now that is multiplying by 3 this time. And the rate starts off as, say, 12. Well, if it's a first order for here, you must be multiplying by 3 to the power of 1. So we would end up with 36 for the rate. Remember, that is because we said it was a first order with respect to A. I've seen them use word multipliers occasionally. Um... I've seen them do a maths trick, which I'm going to show you uh, very soon, which is quite a dirty one, but be aware it could happen. Uh, what did I want to say next? I wanted to say overall order. Now, the overall order of a reaction is actually easy. It's hardly even worth mentioning about, but they frequently ask it because it's one of these tiny little definitions that people tend to forget. Let's pretend it wasn't zero order with respect to C. Let's pretend this was our final set of data. First order, second order, third order. The overall is simply the sum of these. So it's overall sixth order reaction. So the overall, overall order, try saying that after a coffee, um, is just the sum of the individual orders. One plus two plus three. Uh, let's have a look at a rate equation now, both in general terms and specific terms. Rate equations tend to take the following form, folks. They are rate equals k, which is simply a small k, by the way. Please make sure there's a small k, not a capital k. They are equilibria constants. Let's not confuse that because you lose marks that way. Uh, so rate is equal to a constant number times the concentration of the chemicals involved. So that is, uh, in our case, we said it was A, and you have to raise each concentration to its relative uh, order. So it would be A to the one. We originally said B was a second order reaction. And we actually said 
start off with, we said C was a zero order reaction. So there will be no C involved here because concentrate uh, because C was a zero order. I know I went back and changed it um, to show a third order, but originally we said it was zero order, i.e. we explained that changing concentration of C had no effect on the rate because it's not involved in the slowest step. So that is the general abstract rate equation um, for our particular A plus B plus C reaction. I did say I would do specific examples as well as abstract examples. So let me fish out an actual SQA example, including some very nasty maths that I warned you about. Okay, we've got um, a question on chlorine dioxide is used in water sterilization. An experiment is carried out to determine the kinetics, so it's a rate equation, for the reaction between chlorine dioxide and hydroxide ions. Here we have a nice little equation here. Please remember, this is the overall reaction. We can't get any information from the overall reaction. We've actually got to do the experiments. There's no other way to get, there's no other way to work out which of these two, perhaps both, are involved in the rate determining step. You must do the experiments for it. So here we've got three reactions, and we change the concentration of chlorine dioxide and the concentration of hydroxide, and we get the rate here. Now, before I go any further, let me show you the nasty maths trick. If we have a look at these rates, this is 2.48 times 10 to the minus 2. This is 9.92 times 10 to the minus 2. Now, this initially looks like 2.98, except it's times 10 to the minus 1, uh, which is really nasty, because that means it's actually 29.8 times 10 to the minus 2. So if you keep them all in the same power of 10, then you can compare the numbers more easily. So let's have a look and see what has changed here. Between reactions 1 and 2, we've kept these two the same, which is wonderful. So the hydroxide is not a problem. And we have multiplied, again, they're doing the same trick here. Look at that. That's 12 times 10 to the minus 2. So that's 12. So you can see we have doubled the concentration of chlorine dioxide. We haven't changed the hydroxides. And we have gone from 2.5, 2.48, up to 9.92. So I'm hoping you can see that if we have doubled this, goodness me, I need a sharper point in my pen, sorry. That has gone times 2 to the 2. So that's this is 4 times that. So we can safely say that it's a second order reaction with respect to chlorine dioxide. Let's try the same again for changing hydroxides. Pick a different colour, eh? So we have gone from 3 times 10 to the minus 2 up to 9 times 10 to the minus 2 for these two. And if you look at these two concentrations, they have remained the same. So let's compare reactions 2 and 3 for the hydroxides. So that's gone up by a factor of 3. And I'm hoping you can see that from that, call that 10 for easy counting and that 30 for easy counting, that has also gone up by a factor of 3 to the power of 1. So, very quick summary of that, because it's quite a complex one, this one. The numbers are making life complex for us. If we compare reactions 1 and 2, that lets us look at the effect of changing chlorine dioxide. We went from doubling the chlorine dioxide, but quadrupling the rate. So, we're multiplying by 2, and we're multiplying by 2 to the power of 2, which means it is a second-order reaction with respect to this. Then we looked at reactions 2 and 3, which kept the concentration of chlorine dioxide the same, but this time we're changing the concentration of the hydroxides. And we found that we multiplied by 3 here, and we simply multiplied by 3 here as well, which is 3 to the power of 1. So therefore, it is a first-order reaction with respect to hydroxide, which means we've just answered these two. Am I still in shot there? Yeah, I am. Let's move on to the second part of uh, the question.
Now, the second part of the question is asking you, they very often put these together as a three mark question, but they've separated them out here. We want the overall rate equation for this. So we said that rate equals K, and then it will be chlorine dioxide, no longer uh, chlorine dioxide. Get your formulas right, silly old fool. Sorry about that. Um, so ClO2 to the power of 2 times hydroxide ions, OH minus, to the power of 1. You can choose to put that one in or just leave it blank if you want. Let's have a look at the next part now. Calculate the value for K. So they want a numerical value for K and they want you to actually, just for a change, they haven't given you any units, they're expecting you to work out the units. Let me show you how to do that, folks. This would be easier to do on a separate piece of paper. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is let's have a look at this. Down here, I think I'll do the numerical value of K on one side and we'll try and squeeze the units in on the other side. Might just zoom back out a touch again. There we go. Just to give me more space to work in. Right, let's do K first. Now, how are you supposed to work out K? Well, if you rearrange the rate equation, then K is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of chlorine dioxide. I nearly did the same thing again squared times the concentration of hydroxide to the one. So basically what we need to do is we need a number for this, this, and this, and then that will give us a number for K. You can pick any of these three lines, but just for easy living, let's I'm going to pick the first line. So we need the rate, which is uh, 2.4, am I still in short? Yes, I am. So 2.48 times 10 to the minus 2 divided by... That's a rate, and the concentration of chlorine dioxide, that was 6 times 10 to the minus 2, and we need to square that, multiplied by 3 times 10 to the minus 2. Haven't easily got a calculator at hand, let me just go and get one. Sorry about that. 229.6 is our value for K. Unfortunately, there's no way to do a sanity check on uh, the rate constant, as it's called. I think I forgot to say that. Oh my goodness, amateur hour. I'm not sure, it's been a long day. Uh, there's no way to sanity check it, these can be almost any number. Let's move on to the last thing, which uh, are the units of this, because this has units. Now this involves a little bit of algebra with units, I'm afraid. If you notice, we have a top line and bottom lines, and they all have their individual units, moles per liter, moles per liter, moles per liter per second. So what I'm gonna do, is I am going to substitute, instead of substituting numbers, I'm going to substitute units here. Cancel everything out, see what's left over, and that will be our final answer for the units. So I'll do that in green. So the rate was moles, liters to the minus one, seconds to the minus one. That's, that's moles to the plus one, actually, just for easy counting. Liters to the minus one, seconds to the minus one. That's being divided by this which was moles per liter squared. So that's actually going to be moles squared liters to the minus two. So I'm just squaring the units of this or multiplying that by another moles per liter. So that's moles to the one liters to the minus one. This sort of thing does my head in, frankly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather these two together first, which will give me on the bottom line moles to the 3, let me just check that, yeah, moles to the positive 3, liters to the minus 3. And on the top, we had moles to the 1, liters to the minus 1, seconds to the minus 1. Now, very, if you're better at math than I am, which, let's face it, is quite possible, you could probably do all this as it stands, but I'm going to take everything on the bottom up to the top, this and this. So all you need to do is invert the signs on their indexes. So everything's on one line. Then we can cancel out things for my tiny brain much easier. So we end up with moles to the 1, liters to the minus 1, seconds to the minus 1, moles to the minus 3, and liters to the plus 3. <laughs> right, now we can gather everything together. So I'm seeing plus 3 for the liters, 
minus 1. So that means it's litres to the plus 2. I'm seeing um, moles to the plus 1, moles to the minus 3, which will leave me with moles to the minus 2. And seconds to the minus 1 doesn't get changed. So that abomination there is the unit, and that is our number. And that's three marks. Uh, and I think we're done. Let me just have a quick check for a second, folks. The 76 and 77. Orders of reaction are used to relate the rate of reaction to the reacting species. I'm not sure what that means. That's a pretty bland uh, sentence. Change of the concentration of A has no effect on the rate, then it's a zero order. If you double A and it doubles the rate, then it's first order. Just, it's a bit limiting to just say doubling because you just saw an SQ example where they didn't double it, trebled it. Um, so I prefer my version of that. The rate can be expressed as rate is equal to a uh, rate constant K times the concentration of the chemical. If doubling the concentration of A quadrupled the rate, then it's second order. And you write it like that. The order of a reaction with respect to any one reactant is the power to which the concentration of that reactant is raised in the rate equation. So they're saying that that is the definition of the order. Okay, just in case they ask you that, worth remembering. The overall order is the sum of all the individual little powers. Um, the order can only be determined from experimental data. You can't tell by looking at the equation. If you had, for example, if you had 2A plus B plus 3C makes D, that does not mean it's a third order or a second order or a first order. The only way you can work out the orders is by doing the reactions. You get the little table that I showed you before. The rate equation of the rate constant can be determined. Yep. Uh, these, oh yeah, zero, first, second. They do mention third order, so yes, it is a thing. I, they've sort of done it backwards in the wrong order. That's why I started with this one. It makes more sense if you start with this one. A series of steps called the reaction mechanism. One of these steps is the slowest one, which is called the rate determining step. And experimentally determined rate equations can be used to determine possible reaction mechanisms. That's why I said about uh, the actual example we came across. We said that it was... Um, first order with respect to A, second order with respect to B, and zero order with respect to C. And I said that means C molecules are not involved, whereas you have two B molecules and you have an A molecule involved in the rate determining step. Can I remind you the rate determining step is not always the final step? You very often, so that would mean that the actual mechanism for the rate determining step here would be something like A plus 2B. It doesn't necessarily make D, it can make some sort of intermediate. And then the intermediate can then go on to react with C, which is another reactant of course, and eventually make your D. It's just that this is fast and this is slow. Remember, that is the rate determining step, so it is the slowest one. Right folks, um, Complicated one, this one. I might make a follow-up where I have a look at some past paper examples in a bit more detail. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.